station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. CBS Interactive, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CBS Interactive. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How me? We are ready, sir. We hear you. All right, Commander Kelly, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, astronaut Scott Kelly is halfway through his year-long mission on board the International Space Station, and he joins me now from the ISS. Sir, this is such a great moment for us. Uh, you're at the halfway point in the mission. How are you feeling? feel uh, pretty good. Um, been busy. Today's been a pretty busy day, but uh, overall I'm feeling great and, uh, you know, look forward to the second half of this, this year in space. Uh, Commander, you are studying how weightlessness affects vision. I find that really fascinating. What have you learned? Well, there are some... Uh, some negative effects of living in this microgravity environment, you know, due to, due to the microgravity also, uh, you know, effects due to radiation and there's, you know, effects on our immune system, um, bone loss, muscle loss, things like that. And one of them, one of them is, uh, is vision. Um, as far as what we've learned so far from, from this flight and uh, some of the experiments that we've done, I'm not too sure. Uh, you know, the scientists on the ground, um, need to look at all the data that we get throughout the whole mission and then they um, they analyze it and they write uh, papers and the papers are peer-reviewed and published and that's a very uh, very long process I know as far as like my symptoms of my vision uh, as far as that's concerned um, you know even though I had some like structural changes last time in my eyes, uh, just subjectively, my vision seems uh, seems unchanged from from when I launched. That's really interesting. Uh, the other thing that I think a lot of people would find interesting, sir, is that you gave yourself a flu shot a couple of weeks ago. Uh, given that the space station is a very sterile environment, and all of you guys presumably are pretty healthy, why do you need a flu shot in space? Well, the flu shot was really just a, a way to test our immune system. It wasn't to protect me uh, from the flu. I had the same flu shot. It was actually last year's flu shot. The flu ch shot, the, the serum formula uh, changes every every year based on, you know, what the projected, uh, you know, strain of the flu is, I guess. And uh, so both myself and my brother had the last year's flu shot. And then uh, we both had last year's flu shot again um, recently to, to see how our immune system uh, responds and to compare my brother, who is, you know, genetically very similar to me, uh, but on the ground, how that compares to, to mine and my immune response in space. So flu shot was really just to, uh, as a, a mechanism to study the, the uh, uh, science of the immune system and not to protect me from the flu. Now, we could get the flu up here if someone brought us the flu, uh, but we try to protect against that. You're, you're going to be in space for close to a year, sir, and one of your research projects is keeping a journal to chart your moods and your general impressions uh, without giving us any secrets or any private moments, what have you noticed in the changes in your mood or behavior? Anything interesting? You know, I was pretty lucky that I had lived up here before, and uh, so I knew, I knew what to expect. Um, uh, so, you know, I expected that this would would seem like a long time because I, last time I was up here for 50, 159 days, and now I've been up here for, like, I think 189 with, with uh, about that ahead of me, um, or a little less than that ahead of me. So, you know, I did expect that, you know, I would have a feeling, a little bit of, uh, 
you know, fatigue from the duration, from the fact that you're always at work, you can't go outside, um, you're always on a very, you know, pretty stringent schedule. So I knew that going into it. So I don't think it's affected my my mood much or my my behavior, but it is something that, uh, you know, people are interested in. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I think people are interested in, you, you put out on Twitter, you're very active on Twitter, which is great for all of us here on Earth. Uh, you, back in April, you tweeted a picture uh, of your, your bedroom on board the ISS, and you, and you called it, you said it, all the comforts of home. Uh, well, most of them. So how well are you sleeping in that little cozy bedroom? Um, it's interesting. I, I sleep okay. Um, it's somewhat different than on Earth. I mean, I definitely miss the, uh, you know, the weight of the, the blanket and the feeling of the sheets and the pillows and stuff like that. You don't really have that sense up here. But, uh, you know, the one advantage of, of sleeping here and just living here in general is, uh, you know, a lot of the aches and pains you have on Earth after a while go away. I'm not really sure why, but uh, I guess maybe because you're not using your joints and your muscles much, um, except when you're exercising, that, you know, they have more time to, to heal and recover. Um, so in that regard, sleeping up here is more comfortable. You know, I don't have, you know, neck pain, back pain, things like that. Uh, so it's it's better in, the, in that respect, but, but not as good with regards to, like, feeling, the, like I said, the weight of the blanket and the sheets and stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of people could get into not feeling any aches and pains, sir. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, we saw another picture that you tweeted earlier, uh, the storm that we're expecting here uh, on the east coast of the United States. And obviously, you can see that from space. I'm just wondering, uh, and there we see that image there. It's pretty cool. Does it move very quickly across uh, from your vantage point, or does it sort of just hover there? given the distance you are in space. So I think that storm at the time was moving six miles an hour, and we're moving 17,500 miles an hour. So even if it was moving uh, much faster, you know, fast storm speed, I guess, um, you know, the, the relative speed is so much that you would never notice it. It seems like it's standing still. Sir, sir, before we let you go, we got only about two minutes left. I got to ask you, you know, a lot of people gush over astronauts, and they think you guys are heroes. Uh, but you've said in the past that you're just a regular guy. I wonder, though, when you were a kid learning about Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin or Scott Carpenter, did, how did you see them? Well, you know, I, I, I looked uh, to them as, as heroes, you know, very accomplished, uh, you know, astronauts, pilots, test pilots. Um, yeah, so I was very in, impressed with, with them and, and what they did and what they had accomplished. So, uh, yeah, I, I was impressed, obviously. Here's the last dorky question I'm going to ask you, sir. Uh, do you ever get tired of doing flips up there? Um, not really. Uh, you don't, I don't, I don't get, get tired of it. You definitely, you definitely get better at Whoa. it, you know, the longer you're up here <laughs> to, to where, you know, you can, Great and, I, form, and I can do them, you know, even much faster and, 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 and do a lot of them. So you definitely get like Olympic caliber flip, uh, technique after you've been up here for a long time. <laughs> that is really cool. We love it. Also notice you're wearing a bison belt. I think it's a bison belt, which they call it sort of a last resort belt. I have one of those. If you're wearing it up in space, it must be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't even know what brand it is. It's just kind of a convenient thing. Obviously, no, uh, no use for this little, you know, carabiner type device on the front up here because, you know, maybe if uh, maybe we wore an EVA, we that, could sir. use it, put a tether on here. All right, Commander Scott Kelly, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. That was great. We really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Glad I could uh, talk to you today. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR.
That concludes the CBS Interactive interview. Thank you, CBS Interactive. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.